should be back in case I'm not, please let me know. Oop, I didn't want to go into the limit cut. Oh well. <clears throat> I had to set up the... Okay, cool. Thank you, Tom, for telling me that we are back. Alrighty. So, now we have finally gotten to Kingdom Hearts 3 proper. And I say that as I accidentally wrote, <laughs> load into Limit Cut. Uh, as opposed to the main game. So. Second. First. Same as the first. <clears throat> God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, I did it again! <laughs> did I- did I do it again? Oh, uh, god damn it. Okay, hold on. Come on, Nicole, it's just one more game, you can get through this. Continue main story. Square. Okay, so. <laughs> Alrighty. So. Kingdom Hearts 3 proper, I will also be talking about Remind. Um, obviously, Melody of Memory will not be talked about here because that hasn't been uh, released yet. Uh, but there is a demo, which I don't know if I'll play after this. <clears throat> Alrighty. So, for this game, gameplay mechanics, once again. So we have our original combat, we have our attack, our magic, our items. Um... Just as uh, Cage 2 had the square button branch, this game maps it to circle for some reason. So there is a branch to the base combo that launches uh, that launches enemies upwards and allows players to deal with and control airborne enemies. Um, it's not as well implemented in this game. I don't think anybody really uses the circle button for this additional branch. Um, I don't know why it's mapped to circle. Um, oh man, Tom, that's rough. Um, we have our abilities, the special moves that add to the base combat by spending ability points. Uh, AP increases through leveling and AP boosts. We do have our counter attacks. Um, our special moves triggered when attacking after a block. Um, <clears throat> we have our magic, which is like in Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2 is upgraded uh, through the main story and achieving certain objectives. And like KH2, the magic is automatically uh, replenished after uh, the MP bar is uh, used. I'd always get around halfway through and then my brain would just skip what I need to do. Yeah, that, I've had that issue as well. Um, Keyblades! Keyblades! <laughs> Acquired through the main story and certain objectives, they offer certain extra abilities on top of adding to the base character's stats. However, uh, they can be upgraded in this game. You do that through the Moogle. Uh, so, they upgrades the power of the Keyblade and the Keyblade's abilities by bring bringing the correct amount of materials, much like Synthesis. Um, which, again, synthesis is creating special items, armor, and weapons by bringing the correct amount of materials. Um, we do have uh, our armor. Our armor and accessories have made a return. These special items that add to the player's base stats uh, may offer uh, special abilities. Um, <clears throat> we have our shot locks, the lock-on, uh, Lock on base crowd control attack. Um, the main difference in this game is that there are special shot locks uh, depending on what keyblade you are using. Um, just as before, you cannot use the uh, shot locks if your focus bar is depleted and, they are, and the, sh the focus bar is depleted through yeah. use um, and recovered through save points and enemy drops and, and items and such. Um, so we have flow motion in this game. It's quite a nerfed version of flow motion. Uh, so again, the special navigation move set yeah. that is activated if a player rolls in, uh, rolls or slides into a, a wall or a pole or encounters a specific magic. Um, Sora will gain uh, special attacks for a short yeah. amount of time. Um, yeah. 
incredibly nerfed flow motion in this game, which I completely understand. Uh, we also have some free running where Sora can just run up walls like a fucking champion. Um, he eats his greens. Whoop. Um, the gummy ship has made a return in this game uh, in a much different form than previous games. So as opposed to Manon Rails shoot 'em up, uh, we have an open world almost where you're flying through uh, just this massive map with treasures and bosses and challenges. Um, and these shooting sections are wave shooters or they are bosses in their own right. So we have our summons, uh, which are called links in this game. They're, you know, you summon a, a Disney character to aid you in battle with special moves, and they're acquired through obtaining heart binders in this game. Um, <clears throat> and so our situation commands. So again, there are special reaction command style attacks, uh, or there are attacks that build up to the situation bar. We have our grand magic, which is built up through this through the situation bar, and it grants the player the next level or the final level spell. So, for example, um, if you are spamming just regular fire and you get the grand magic, it's fire, as opposed to fire fireza, which would be the final tier spell. Um, we do have form changes in this game. Uh, there are upgrades to the base combat that changes depending on what Keyblade is equipped. So like shot locks have a specific, have Keyblade specific shot locks, there are Keyblade specific form changes. Um, and they're also tied to Keyblade transformations. So we have Keyblade transformations and drive forms kind of combined into one. Um, uh, these, the form changes and the Keyblade transformations may have two stages depending on what Keyblade you are using. Um, we have attraction flow in this game, which you hit a particular enemy and it triggers a situation command where you can summon a Disney ride to deal with large enemies or large crowds of enemies. Now, if you Oh, traction flow. You had you had high hopes, <laughs> but you turned out to be quite a bit of a nuisance. Um, but it was fun to use these uh, again for a beginner, uh, just going through the beginner mode. And we have our team attacks there uh, that are triggered randomly with a party member. <clears throat> so, oh, thank you, tiny child. I wish I could wave at you. Let's see. Yes, hi. I see you, tiny child. Would you like a picture with a bona fide hero? To come back. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Damn it. Um. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> Alright, that is all the, uh. It's all the gameplay. A little bit more in depth than 0.2. So, the tutorial for this game, we have a multi-stage tutorial. It spans like, like, <laughs> it's about as, it, it's, it's about as long as Roxas' segment in Kingdom Hearts 2, but, oh man, it spans multiple worlds. So first, we have the dive into the final world, as I am calling it. So, uh, the dive into the final world the very beginning tutorial and it just kind of what it does it gives you the settings and the basic the settings uh, of your game uh, basically how, uh, which uh, path you're choosing and the basics of combat um, I'm personally not a fan of the dive into the final world um, I feel it's a pale imitation of Kingdom Hearts 1's tutorial it doesn't have any of the mystery as opposed to even though there's this why are we in this cloud world and why is dark side clear right um you just choose the settings and you learn the combat basics but the strange thing about this tutorial is that it takes place towards the end of the game and this has been confirmed by Nomura um so the dive into the final world takes place after Sora has pieced himself back together. 
in the final world. So there's that bit of mystery to it, and I honestly, I'm still trying to quite, I'm still trying to figure out what exactly went on during that whole section of the game. <sighs> um, maybe Melody of Memory will give a little bit of insight, but hell, even Jiminy's journal doesn't really give me much insight on that, so. Um, so after the dive into the final world, uh, we have Olympus. So Olympus serves as a combat and a navigation tutorial. So we are slowly introduced to the combat mechanics as we progress through the world story, as we're going through Thebes. Um, and once we progress through Thebes, this very, very linear progression through the world, um, yeah. we then enter Mount Olympus and the ascent up Mount Olympus acts as breathing room. It gives the player a breathing room to become accustomed to the introduced mechanics in the same way that Traverse Town's additional districts uh, allowed the player to get used to flow motion and dream drop distance. Um, oh boy, let's go! Shut up, Donald. Uh, and then once we ascend up to Olympus. Olympus introduces the final set of combat and movement mechanics, uh, the shot locks and the air step, um, that uh, all get tested in a boss fight for the level against the, the our final three titans. Um, and what this does is it starts off with Sora feeling incredibly sluggish in the very beginning of this world to a, to being knocked all the way to like the, the back of Thebes ascending a mountain climbing to the top of Olympus gaining all of these combats so that by the time we are facing the titans we're a fucking fighting machine we are a fast paced fighting machine and I've always appreciated how this progression of Sora feeling sluggish to Sora feeling very fast paced, like on par with 3D, um, how it also directly ties into the narrative of Sora having to regain his strength, right? Um, and so after Olympus, we are then thrown into the gummy ship. Um, so the gummy ship in and itself has its own tutorial. And I like the way it does this because we have a breadcrumb thing happening here. So when you're thrown into the world map, um, which I think I know which one it is. Um, I think I know which gate we have to pop out of. Uh, let's see. What? One bar from here, there we go. <clears throat> I kind of want to show off how, um, how this breadcrumbing works, because it's actually, it's really well done. <laughs> um, the tutorial of Kingdom Hearts 3 is so, it's done so well that it doesn't really feel like a tutorial, right? Ba -da -ba -ba -da 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 -da. So, um, how the breadcrumbing works is that we are thrown out from this gate into this massive area. So, our eyes directly lead us to the money that's here. Um, I don't think this is actually the right spot. <laughs> um, I don't remember. But, so... In any way, it just kind of, it does, it works out in the same way. So basically, you uh, follow the breadcrumbs to this, um, to that airstream. And the first airstream will take us directly into a heartless battle. Um, I don't, I end in the battle. Um, and then after the battle, we are again further led along through the airstreams and um, the different uh, 
collectibles in the world, the meteorites, the treasure orbs, I'm pretty sure that at one point it like drops you off right next to a treasure orb and all these breadcrumbs lead you to Traverse, Traverse Town, <laughs> lol, no, um, leads you to Twilight Town. And Twilight Town acts as an exploration tutorial. So, that's Corona. <laughs> um, so, Twilight Town introduces non-combat mechanics that encourage exploration of the lem levels. We're introduced to Lucky Emblems, we're introduced to Cooking, and we're introduced to the classic Kingdom minigames. And, uh, so, we have, you know, we are then dropped into, um, to the main area of Twilight Town, and it acts like Traverse Town did as a playground to allow the player to get used to some of the, to the nav navigation mechanics that were introduced at the end of Olympus, such as uh, air stepping and getting more used to wall running, right? Um, while all the while finding lucky emblems, taking pictures yeah. in random spots, um, like for example, for example, taking a picture here. Uh, where the clock tower is, or searching around to find uh, to find uh, the posters and or cooking items, right? Um, and then after Twilight Town is completed, we are then I dropped. We'll find some ingredients around here. Goofy, please. Uh, we are then dropped into the main chunk of the chunk of the game. We are now exploring the Disney worlds, right? So, the level design era. Um, again, this is the 3D era, as I've said multiple times with 0.2 in, in Dream Drop Distance. We have varied level design that includes wide areas, tall sections, constricting and linear corridors. Each level has its own navigation challenges tied by story or puzzles, and the explorations of levels are encouraged and rewarded with cleverly placed treasure chests. <clears throat> now, overall thoughts. How long is my overall thoughts? No, it's not too long. <laughs> um, Alright. So. I am going to say that despite my griev grievances with some of the, the story pacing and some of the less exciting levels and a few gameplay annoyances, um, with all the added details in the level design, the the depth that's added to the level design that, that Dream Drop Distance introduced, like having these uh, these objects that you can hit, or the NPCs find some ingredients around, here. around, or maybe finding some ingredients around here, um, or the NPCs talking to each other, um, or comments from Sora, Donald, and Goofy. I haven't seen a movie in ages. Wait, there's movies on Destiny Islands? Okay, I learned something new. <laughs> um, uh, this is so exciting! Oh god, no, stop talking. Um, so, li little things like that it, uh, that add a little bit more depth to the, to the level design, but also the improvements on the gameplay mechanics from the previous games, and the really impactful... <laughs> the island you see in case you seem to have an actual yeah it does I just I don't know I like that movie comment because that shows that I don't know like Sora had a normal life <laughs> we never see Sora's normal life we never see him going to school and doing homework um <clears throat> so all these all these improvements that are made to the gameplay and the level design and these incredible impactful story moments such as Roxas's return um, or waking up Ben um, or <laughs> Yidus Venetus um, all of these things despite my grievances uh, Cage for Sora gets a job <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, despite the issues that I have with some of these games I will go out and say that I do believe that Kingdom Hearts 3 is my favorite Kingdom Hearts game. It has 
topped Cage 2. Um, there's just so much love and polish uh, in this game. Um, and almost every world is a joy to go to, and honestly, the gameplay is just, just flat out just fun to play. And again, this is my personal opinion. I'm well aware that still, for some reason, the Kingdom Hearts fandom is attacking anybody who likes Kingdom Hearts 3. Why well, like Kingdom Hearts 3? Fucking come at me. Anyway. Um, so... Where Kingdom Hearts 2's quality of life improvements on the magic and the, inc the inclusion of the square button uh, combo branch and the drive forms were the highlights of its customization for combat, the quality of life improvements on the shot locks, the inclusion of air step and keyblade transformations are KH3's uh, highlights for customization of combat. Um, and again, this is more of a bash the computer with the keyblade <laughs> um so each gameplay system tries tries to add depth to it but i would say that really only the games that succeed in adding actual depth and not just artificially artificial depth uh to the gameplay are, are king of hearts 2 and Dream Drop, Dream Drop Distance and Kingdom Hearts 3. These all add actual felt depth to the gameplay that Birth by Sleep, in my opinion, doesn't exactly do that well. And obviously Chain of Memories doesn't do well. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, and again, again, these customizations, you know, so each Keyblade has their own variation of a shot lock. Um, which again is in slow motion, and some of the keyblades can transform up to two times, and the transformation triggers a drive form um, and that changes Sora's base combat style. And again, these this combat style changes with each keyblade transformation, right? And because the keyblades can be upgraded, this means that weaker keyblades like the Kingdom Key are still viable weapons to use um, simply for their form changes and then their attacks. Um, and especially now with the new tech that was discovered, the using a panacea <laughs> to allow you to switch to keyblades faster, you know, um, it's insane to see some of the combos between like just the Kingdom Key and Ultimate, Ultima Key, ult, uh, Ultima Weapon, to be both viable in combat. Um, and again, I think that really adds depth and, and more customization to to the gameplay uh, than, than the command deck or the, the card system ever did. Um, because, yeah, you could just spam fire all you want in this game if you really want to. And I know some people that have complained to me personally that all you do in Kingdom Hearts 3 is spam fire. But there's literally more things that you can do. Uh, <laughs> the game gives you all these options. If you're going to use fire, that's fine. But that doesn't mean it's the only option. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> take another drink of water. Yeah, I don't think anybody used a panacea in the base game, so the fact that it's used for, like, crazy tech is fucking amazing. Um, so, Kingdom Hearts 3 takes out the quick time event uh, and ability point balancing aspect of the reaction commands and limits by lumping them in with situation commands. Um, so as I mentioned, the situation commands, they happen randomly, or they happen by filling up a bar or hitting a certain enemy. And each one that pops up is optional. Uh, so yeah. let's head to a battle situation here. Oh, and also, like, you know, a massive quality of life improvement is being able to use magic and move at the same time. Like, oh my god, thank god. Back off. So right there, um, I have a, 
I have an attraction flow that I can use, but I don't have to use it. Um, and these situation commands, they stack on top of each other. So, um, let's see. See ya! So, um, let's see if I can get anything here. Some stacking reaction commands. Uh, Alright, so I just got two attraction flows that have stacked on top of each other, and I can scroll through these options. Um, Back off! And of course, there's still some optimized, uh, some optimized commands. Like, if you're not using Thundaga, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Back off. So right there, I have an option of using Thundaga or uh, using an attraction, attraction flow command. And holy shit, I'm getting so many synthesis materials. Um, if I was hitting enemies with my Keyblade more, I would get a Keyblade transformation, right? Um, and. Because they like will also sit on the screen for a good amount of time and be scrolled through, this again allows for more player choice in combat. Um, and I find that all these combat options, uh, even though there's a lot of them, as I said, they've been used in a way to increase the depth of the gameplay in an intuitive way, and each system is fun to use. Um, and again, there can be there are optimal strategies out there. I personally haven't really found one besides, you know, uh, for example, crowd control. I usually use uh, I use Aroga and uh, Thundaga for the most for the most part, right? This gives me a good crowd control. But also, when you have a Keyblade transformation active, uh, the nature of how these spells act uh, they change. Yeah. So. Still, even then, my my optimal crowd control uh, changes slightly depending on which Keyblade I'm using. Um, so, it kind of keeps the game balanced a little bit more. Uh, again, there isn't as much an optimal strategy like the command deck, or there, and there isn't too much to keep track of like the card deck and chain of memories. Um... Again, with the level design, like, <laughs> the levels are varied. You've got hidden passages with treasures and unique navigational challenges. No two levels feel the same in this game, and they're a joy to play through and explore. Um, there are multiple levels in this game, uh, such as Olympus and the Marsh and Corona, and the freedom of the open seas in the Caribbean that uh, uh, tie very well thematically uh, with the level design. Um, like, so for, ooh, I don't know if I want to talk about this with Olympus. That was going to be for a video I was going to do separately. I won't talk about that. Uh, but so, let's go for the Marsh and Corona, for example. So, Sora enters the Marsh right when we're introduced to Mother Gothel, who is technically and the marsh is the darkest part of the area when we have just visited the darkness that is chasing Rapunzel around. Um... And, you know, the Caribbean, it's, you're exploring the open seas, the, there's this freedom aspect to it, because Sora has been actually given a ship and is able to explore the seas free as the wind, as he, as he had wished. And again, that's another video I'll, I'll eventually try to make later on down the line, because I have thoughts about Olympus and the Caribbean specifically. Um... <clears throat> um... So... With the story, I personally think the payoff uh, for all, uh, with all the character returns is well worth the wait. Uh, each character gets their time in the sun, either through the main game or Remind. Oh, except for Kyrie. Um, I mean, she gets her boss fight, which is super awesome, and she gets to kick the shit out of Zemnis. Um, but oh my, oh my girl, you've been done dirty. I really hope the future games give you more spotlight. And I, Namora said not to expect much from Melody of Memory, but I really hope we get to play as Kyrie in future games. Um, but almost everything in the story still like keeps you engaged. Um, and but the thing is, is that. There is this underlying narrative that 
Sora is maturing in this game. And you do see it. Um, you see Sora making, I guess, more grown-up decisions. Um, where he's... <laughs> so Nomura had said that Kingdom Wars 3 would show us a mature Sora. And after the events, specifically the end of the game... Um, I have trouble trying to figure out what a mature Sora is. What is Nomura's definition of maturity? Because the way I am seeing it, it is Sora doing things on his own. Which I understand that standing on your own two feet is a sign of maturity. But going off and doing reckless shit by yourself is not mature. We have seen that with Riku. And and for Sora to do kind of similar stuff like that. And it to potentially be called mature is a message that I'm not exactly okay with, but I don't know. <laughs> um and my major issue with Kingdom Hearts 3's story is that uh, for all that happens and all that is expected to happen, there's a lot of setup for the future of the series. And at times I feel like it is setting up the future of the series more so than is addressing the actual events that are supposed to take place. Um, so, for example, um, <laughs> Subject X, um, who is apparently important somehow, but we just learned about her, right? Apparently she was the motivation for Syx and Axel uh, in, in Birth by Sleep. Apparently she was one of the one of the experiments of the heart and the reason why Zane or further his furthered his research into the heart after like tossing Diz into the to the fucking realm in between. Um and it's all these things that they get brought up and because there are things that are addressed in the future of the series, we don't get to see them. And so like for example, Aqua and Ansem, right? Ansem is Terra's heartless. <laughs> is Terra and Xehanort's heartless. And while we're never really shown that Ansem has any of Terra's memories, we do see that Z Z uh, Zemnis has Terra's memories. But we never see Aqua and Zemnis approach each other. Zemnis's huge thing is that he starts to feel more emotion towards the end of the game. But that's just because he's gotten his shit kicked in by Sora, and not the fact that he is Terra's nobody, has memories of Aqua, has talked with Aqua's armor for 10 years, but we never see Aqua and Xemnas talk to each other, right? Um, we don't get more character interactions with uh, some of the Guardians of Light. We don't really get to see... <laughs> <laughs> much of what we wanted of between Roxas and Ven or Sora and Vanitas because oh we got to talk about subject X right now um you know so that's a huge thing for me I realize that it is it is how it is how we rectify all of this prequel stuff that we've been getting all this setup to Kingdom Hearts 3 but it takes away from other encounters. Um, you know, so for example, the chess, for another example, I should say, the chess game between Ericus and Xehanort, right? <sighs> um, it's a really cool concept that I wish that we had gotten to see more of this chess game throughout, throughout the game, to see these critical points being made. Um, in conjunction with the story, um, but because that is also in itself a setup to the future of the series, because of this setup of this chess game, we miss the actual chess game. Like, 
We see. <sighs> oh, it's really hard for me to explain this. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining it right. Um, but my main thing for Kingdom Hearts 3 is I wanted to see more interaction between Sora and Master Xehanort. And I didn't get that. And it's frustrating to me because we had this whole thing of setup of here's Skull and Kylo, probably important to the future of the series, introduced at the very end of the game and has a little bit of stuff for us to explore and remind, but nothing that ties inherently with Xehanort or Sora for that matter. Um, despite this being the final battle between Sora and Master Xehanort. Oh, I just, that's my main thing. It's just Kingdom Hearts 3 does do a lot to address what is going on, but also at the same time spends a little bit too much time building up the rest of the series. And yeah, um, a few miscellaneous, <laughs> that's not a great thing to end on, but for Remind, I wanted to talk about a few things. Um, so it's super awesome that we get Skala and Kylan to explore. I find Remind very interesting because um, it's a very, very interesting use of downloadable content. So the reason why this downloadable content is not added to the base game is because we need all of the things that happen in the base game to happen in order for us to encounter to get to the DLC. Like, we can't have explorable, explorable Scala at Kylum in base Kingdom Hearts 3 because Remind Sora needs time to explore Scala at Kylum uh, uh, before past Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora gets there, right? Before he fights Xehanort, right? It all, uh, <laughs> it's really it's really interesting how how it uses DLC. Um, now, Kingdom Hearts games I consider to be fairly accessible, right? So you have subtitles that are on by default in all the cutscenes, which is really great. Um, you know, and the gameplay is fairly easy to pick up. It, it's another one of the you know, depending on which game you're playing, it's, you know, fairly easy to pick up. I would not give Chain of Memories to a child, though. Um, <laughs> um, you know, so even, like, smaller kids are able to play it. My four-year-old uh, cousin is playing, well, is experiencing Kingdom Hearts for the first time with her dad, right? Um, and that's accessible to children because, hey, it's Disney. Um, and yeah, there's also, like, you know, a bunch of people dying. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty dark. Um, there's still, again, like, accessible things. Like, uh, I also introduced this game to an eight-year-old who never really played games, but she was able to pick up on the gameplay of this extremely well um, and really enjoyed it to the point where she came back and she's like, can we play the, can we play the Disney game again? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Um, and it was a way to introduce this, this girl to gaming, right? Um, but <sighs> my issue, my main issue with, my main issue with the DLC is locking the very important story content of what happens to of what's going on with Sora behind 14 super bosses. <laughs> um now there are you have the bosses like Xemnas and King Orts 1 and Lingering Will, right? Um but the thing is is that and I expect Melody of Memory is actually going to address some of the things that are present at the end of the Limit Cuts. Um, but it wasn't really necessary for you to understand the, un the world 
and the game universe by defeating Xemnas or Lingering Will. However, it is very necessary for you to understand the rest of the series or the upcoming or what's to come next. Uh, and so you have to defeat or at least get to 14 super bosses. I don't know if you have to defeat the final super secret boss um, to get that story, that final bit of story between that includes the fairy godmother. Um, and so that is where I think accessibility fails for King Hearts 3. Uh, and this and this is coming from somebody who's trying to fucking complete them. Because I enjoy this game and I want to get better at this game. But to have these incredibly difficult bosses, even on beginner mode these are difficult, uh, to block important story content I personally take issue with as a game designer and also as somebody who tries to make things relatively accessible in my designs to have 14 super bosses block important what i consider important story content is really frustrating but that's again the great thing about the internet people uh upload uh the cutscenes almost immediately and spoil who the secret final boss is before you even have a chance to download the goddamn game uh, hi, Teal. Um, yes, so, uh, again, so, uh, to your point that the super boss will probably explain, and it's just a teaser, that is how all, uh, King Hearts super bosses work. But for Limit Cut in particular, you have to, you have to get through the data organization. Uh, to get to the secret boss in order to have this teaser. But the thing is, is that after this teaser, here's this, hey, fairy godmother's talking to Riku because apparently Riku's dreams and Kairi's dreams and the Nameless Star's dreams are very important on how to save Sora. And again, that might be... That, that, that will probably be addressed in Melody of Memory. But right now, it's, it's a little frustrating as somebody who is not that great of a Kingdom Hearts player. Um, uh... In my opinion, I'm not the super, super great of a Kingdom Hearts player. To, again, faced with this gauntlet of 14 super bosses in order to progress through the story. But that is my particular grievance. Um, <clears throat> that being said, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future of the series. I do hope that the future games, uh, the future main games, take a lot of inspiration and follow through with the gameplay design and the level design of of King Hearts 3. Um, I don't particularly agree with you, Teal, but hey, to each their own. You don't need to watch a trailer for a game to know what happens in the, in the game, much like you don't need to play this game to to get what happens next. It happens when it's revealed. Uh, I'm not exactly sure you're that last bit of that comment, but hey. Um, I don't know, um, but yeah, I just I'm just hoping because King of Hearts 3 does a lot of fantastic things. This is a super fun game to play, um, and I really hope we see more worlds um, like Twilight Town, where we have all these NPCs, um, more like Olympus, where we have uh, this awesome thematic uh, gameplay and level yeah. design. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe less Arendelle. <laughs> um, maybe less Arendelle. Um, but hey, um, this game is incredibly fun to play. I do consider it my favorite Kingdom Hearts game. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up. Um, so. That is my consolidated thoughts. Uh, what? Yeah, no, again, uh, again, Teal, I get your point. But right now, as we have reached the end of the series, again, to have this very important, like, little tidbit to be locked behind 
14 super bosses. Again, it just, it just bugs me. So, um, <clears throat> but again, so those are my consolidated thoughts and, and my overall, uh, overview of the entire Kingdom Hearts series in chronolog as I re-experienced it in chronological order, looking at the gameplay and the level design. Uh, if anybody was curious about how long my notes were, the consolidated notes are 25 pages in a Google Doc. Um, my the notes that I took on my phone I was, as I was going through this uh, are 31 parts. All right, 31 parts of notes. Um, <laughs> Um, and there's so many more things that I've written in my notes that I haven't even mentioned. Like, again, there's particular thematic design with Olympus that I don't want to cover here because I want to make my own separate video about it later on. Same with the Caribbean. Um, I, there's... Uh, there's all the little details in Kingdom Hearts 1's level design that I love, that I've even done like a video series on for. Um, you know, so again, this was just mainly to just kind of really look at the gameplay and the, the, the level design to just really get just like a better holistic sense of the series as I was trying to uh, do my own Kingdom Hearts related project. Um, so... Um, these will be uploaded to YouTube. I will probably upload them tomorrow and it'll all just be in one, um, <clears throat> it'll all just be in one, uh, uh, playlist. I'm not gonna, like, upload these in parts because streams have cut out a couple times. Um, but I was curious if anybody had any questions regarding any particular game, um, or aspect of a game. Uh, what's my YouTube? It's awesome in my world, just as it is, uh, uh, on here on Twitch. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, so, so I don't, I don't know if anybody, I feel like I'm doing a class. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about blah, blah, blah? Um, you mentioned Sora ripping a tear in time back when you were talking about 3D, but I don't think you touched on it. That's just more of like a detail. So again, spoilers, if you have not played through the game, don't listen to what I have to say next. So something interesting I found out in the glossary for Remind is uh, the tear in the fabric of time. <laughs> There's a glossary for the divergence in the fabric of time. Uh, uh, that occurred when Sora used the power of waking to overwrite the timeline of defeat. Uh, so, which is, this is actually kind of interesting, this little snippet. Because, um, if you, if we go into the secret reports, um, there's this mention of world lines. Um, let's see... Is it in this one, or is this previous, or the other one? So, a world line, as it was, as it's kind of addressed in the secret reports, refers to what's going on in Union Cross, the, the mobile games. Um, how the dandelions have jumped into a separate world where the Keyblade War didn't happen, right? So for me, I had assumed that Sora had jumped world lines to a period in time where the, it, it, it's it's an entirely new world where the timeline is slightly different <laughs> but um apparently that's not what happened apparently Sora is still within the same world but he just changed time I guess it's Ocarina of Time Although Ocarina of Time makes a lot more sense. Uh, I guess if you're talking about the Zelda timeline that Nintendo f continues to force down people's throats. Um, I guess. But, yeah. Um, again, this whole section of the game 
where Sora is using the power of waking and apparently is going back to the dive into the heart tutorial thing. I still don't exactly know what is happening there. Um, there's just so much that's going on. I don't entirely really believe in the, the, the sleeping world theory. It's really cool. Um... I don't know. Ocarina created two separate timelines. Uh, well, yeah, again, so that's part of the whole Zelda timeline. We got the three timelines. We got the child timeline where Link goes back to revisit his childhood. We got the adult timeline, which is the, the timeline uh, where... The timeline... The adult timeline is when the timeline that remains after Link leaves and then the, the timeline where Link dies, right? That's not exactly what happens in this game. Like, again, the way it's mentioned in the secret reports, world lines, even on a world line with no Keyblade War, pieces but a dream, right? Um, let's see. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Is it this one? Okay. So, the virus has begun a strange undertaking, a reckless plot to allow the five to escape into another world line. We're talking about the same trick that allowed the Dandelions to transfer to other world lines after the Keyblade War. So it sounds like what world lines are, are, I guess you could say different timelines, but they from what I understand is that a world line is transferring to a different world where the timeline is different. So I guess you could say it's jumping to a different timeline, but Sora... Sora creates a hole in the fabric of time. Like... Like, Sori has created two contradictory histories within the same timeline. It's not like he's creating alternate timelines. There are two contradictory histories. Which begs the question, who remembers the first timeline? Because yeah, Sora's got to be one of them. Jiminy has to be one of them. N Nominee, maybe? Like, who remembers the first timeline? <laughs> you know? Um, and that whole section, it feels like something was cut out of it, too, because, like, like, fucking, like, Chip and Dale call up Sora, and they're like, hey, we gotta go to, like, you gotta go to the Key Keyblade Graveyard. There's a new pathway up, and it's like, oh, shit, we were looking for a new pathway to the Keyblade Graveyard. Um, is that the world line is an entirely separate timeline, like, stuff straight up happened differently since the start, maybe they were born differently. Yeah, it... But I, I don't, I don't know why world line is used as opposed to timeline. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm inclined to believe that that's what sort that he just branched off into a different timeline. But again, this this glossary entry makes it seem like that it's not exactly the case. But I don't know. Um... I don't know. <laughs> organization 13. The real Organization 13. Order! Power of Waking. I don't think even Nomura does. I don't think he does either. <laughs> um, so, again, is there... I don't know if anybody has, like, any other things that they want me to talk about regarding any gameplay or level design or just anything Kingdom Hearts-wise. Because if not, um, it is 11.44 p.m. Um, I should be getting to bed. But, um, again, I'm totally down to continue talking about stuff. Um... That'd be nice if he had until Kingdom Hearts 6 planned out. Um, 
really the only thing that is really planned out at this point is Union Cross. Um, Union Cross is progressing very nicely now at this point. Yeah, Lido, it's late. I don't know why you're still up, dude. <laughs> You've been coding, dude. I need to get back into coding. Blue Link! Why are you awake? It's 4 a.m. Are you coding stuff on your own time, like fun projects, or is it work stuff, Lito? Fun project? That's cool. Oh, shit, that's right doing night squad stuff. Sleep schedule is non-existent. Oh, brah, dude, you gotta work better. That is super secret special knowledge. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know if the night squad bot is super secret special knowledge. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know if anybody wanted to talk about anything else Kenya Hearts related or whatever. Um, the the videos I want to make about Olympus and the Caribbean, uh, they won't be really happening anytime soon. Um, I would love to talk about them here, but I would love to actually like do like actual like examples to bring up and editing. So. Um, um, I kind of want to talk about them though, but it's really late. I'm actually, I think, <clears throat> ow. <laughs> Said I was down to talk. Yeah, I mean I am, but it's also late. I could talk about it tomorrow, but I don't know if I'll talk about it tomorrow. I gotta catch up on Supernatural. <laughs> uh, and a few other things. Um, uh, you know what? I know what I'm gonna do. Um, stream's going down for a second. 